Hi guys, I hope you are doing well. So today I'm gonna to finish section 12.5. So it's about lines and uh, planes. Uh, so let's finish first the equation of lines. Um, well, uh, so uh, let me remind you first, um, you know, so last time we said, uh, you know, to determine the equation of a line, we need a point, uh, let's say a point P, let's say P uh, given by the coordinates X0, Y0, Z0, right? And uh, we need, you know, a direction vector uh, U, let's say vector uh, vector U equal to the, uh, let's say, uh, A, B, C. Okay, so let's say here's, this is your vector U. Okay, and this is your point P. Okay, so the line which passes through the point P and the parallel to the vector U would be this line here. So this line here, it passes through the P and it, so this is our line, okay, line L. So it passes through the point P and it's actually, uh, you know, parallel to the vector U, okay? So that would be our line L. Now, let me just remind you the, the parametric equation of a line. So L, so the line L uh, would be, so it's given by, so the parametric equation would be like x equal to x0 plus uh, a times t, y is equal y0 plus b times t, z is equal to z0 plus c times t. So remember t, where t, t is a parameter, so t could be any real number, t is uh, in r, so it could be any real number, so t is our parameter. Okay, so for example, let's say this is our equation L, right? Uh, so x is 2 minus 3t, uh, y is 1 minus t, and z is equal to 2. So what will be, what's the, so what will be a direction vector of this uh, line? So a direction vector, so a direction vector uh, of uh, L is, uh, would be, you know, so here, so you have, you know, minus 3t, so you have minus 3, so minus, so minus 3 here would be like, uh, this is like a, this minus 1 here, so that would be like, that's like b, here there is no t, right, so it's like plus, it's like just 2, right, there's no t, so it's like 2 plus 0 times t, so the c would be the 0, so a direction vector in this case would be, uh, for example, so u equal to negative 3, negative 1, and 0. Okay, and um, so this line passes through, you know, for example, if t is 0, if t is 0, then l passes through... Uh, for example, the point P equal to, so you replace T by zero, you get to one, two, right? So now, for example, if T is uh, three, then L passes through actually the point. So if T is three, then we have two minus uh, nine, so that's negative seven. 1 minus uh, 3, that would be negative uh, 2, and then uh, 2 plus, so there's no t, so just 2 again. So you see, each time you replace t by some real number, you get, uh, you get a, a point which belongs to the line, okay? Now, uh, two lines are parallel if uh, their uh, direction vectors are parallel. So for example, let's say this is a line L, so, so let's say this is L1, and we have a second line. Let's say this is L2, okay? So you see, let's say this is the direction vector of L2. So let's say call this the vector uh, U2, and the direction vector of L1, let's say is U1, okay? So L1 is parallel to L2, L1 parallel to L2, if and only if, so this is equivalent to uh, u1 
to be uh, parallel to u2. So if the direction vectors are parallel, then the lines are actually uh, parallel. So for example, example, so let's say L1 is x equal to 2 minus 40, y is equal 1 minus 80, and z is equal to uh, 3 minus 2t, okay? That's L1. Now, let's say L2 is, L2 is equal uh, x, so x, so parametric equation of L2 is x, let's say uh, negative 1 uh, plus 2t, uh, y is equal uh, negative 2 uh, plus 40, and z equal to 5 plus t. So now the question, are they, are uh, L1 and L2, are they parallel? And L2, are they parallel? Well, so what will be the direction vectors here? Uh, direction vectors. So if the direction vectors are parallel, then the two lines are parallel, right? So what's the direction vector of L1? So direction vector uh, of L1, let's say, let's call it U1. Okay, so what's the direction vector of u1? Again, it's just the coefficients of t. So here's minus 4, here's minus 8, here's minus 2. So u1 is my negative 4, uh, negative 8, and negative 2. Okay, that's the direction vector. That's the direction vector of L1. Now, what about L2? What will be the direction vector of L2? Uh, so u2... is equal to, um, so here, coefficients of t. So we have 2, 4, and 1. So this is 1t, right? So it's 2, 4, and 1, OK? Now, the question is, are uh, these two vectors, are they parallel? Is u1, is it parallel to u2? So we need to compare. Uh, you know, uh, re remember, guys, uh, two vectors are parallel if one vector if one vector is multiple of the other one. So the question is: Is u one a multiple of u two? Yes. Uh, you see, it's u one here. If you multiply u uh, two by negative two, okay, then you see a negative four. It's negative two times two. A negative eight is negative two times four. And negative 2 is equal to negative 2 times 1, right? Uh, so, uh, yes. So, u1 is equal... So, u1 is equal to uh, negative 2 times u2. So, the, the answer, uh, yes. So, the two vectors are actually... Uh, the two lines... So, the two vectors are parallel. So, yes. So, then the, the lines... So, yes the lines are parallel. Okay, because uh, u1 is equal to negative 2 times u2. So, okay. Now, uh, two lines are skew if they are not parallel and do not intersect. Okay, so for example, uh, if you, uh, again, you are in three-dimensional space, so you have like, you know, you have the axis here, and let's say you have these two lines, so let's say this is L1 here, okay, and let's say here's L2, okay. So in, di in three-dimensional space, uh, you know, uh, 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 so either the lines are parallel, okay, uh, so you can have like two parallel lines like this, or they, they do intersect, so they intersect at uh, some point, okay, and they intersect at some point, but the third case is that when the, the, the two lines, they are skew, so they are, they are not parallel and do not intersect, so for example, you have something like this here, 
okay? Again, because you are in three-dimensional space, so that's possible that the two lines are not parallel and do not intersect, okay? So, for, for example, so example, so let's say you have the following two lines here. So let's say L1 is uh, X1 plus 2T, Y is equal to 3T, uh, 3T, uh, Z is equal to 2 minus T, okay, and L2, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, so T is a real number, so T is in R, okay, this is, means in R, or belongs to R, to real numbers. So L2 is, let's say, X is equal to negative 1 plus S, y is let's say 4 plus s uh, z is 1 plus 3s okay so s here is the parameter s is the parameter this real number okay now the question is um uh, so we have to determine if uh, if uh, l1 and l2 uh, if they are, if they are parallel, or uh, do intersect, or skew. Okay. So first, let's check if a one and two. Are parallel. Okay, so we said we need to compare the direction vectors, right? So, so, so this is like step one. So step one. We're gonna check if L1 and L2 are parallel. Well, so direction vectors so here's U1, so it's a direction vector of, uh, of L1 uh, so here you have two, here it's three, and there's a negative one, right? So it's two, three, negative one. So it's two, three, negative one. So that's the direction vector of uh, the first line, L1. Okay, so now what's U2, the direction vector of the second line? Well, that's equal to, so let's see here. So we have one S, you have one S, and then you have three S. So it's one, one, three, right? <clears throat> So the direction vector of the second line is one, one, three, right? Now, is uh, you want a multiple of u two? So, well, you see here, here you have two, here you have one. So, you need to multiply one by two, right, to get two. But here you have one, and if you multiply one by two, you you don't get three, right? You get two again, right? So it's here. So u one. Uh, is not a multiple of u2 okay <clears throat> because if you for example you multiply u u u2 by 2 uh, you get uh, 2 2 6 you don't get 2 3 negative 1 right so uh, uh, u1 and u2 are not parallel Okay, so then L1 and the lines L1 and L2, they are not, are not parallel. Okay. Now, uh, let's check if, if the lines L1 and L2, uh, let's check if they intersect. So this is the step two. Okay. So now, what does it mean uh, that uh, L1 and L2 intersect? Well, it means they have a common point, right? So you ha they have a point which, is, which belongs to uh, both, to L1 and L2. So, and if a point belongs to both L1 and L2, it means that the point satisfies 
the both equations, right? So your the point x y z, you know, you have so you have these two lines here. This is L one. Uh, this is L two. So if they do intersect, so you, it means that you have here, there is a point here. So this is a, the intersection point, right? P. Uh, so P is uh, uh, X, Y, Z, let's say, okay. So the point P here, it belongs to, the, uh, to both lines, right? So P satisfies uh, the two equations. P satisfies both equations, right? So it's the same x, same y, same z. So uh, if this is the same x, same y, same uh, z, it means the x in the first, the x in the first equation. So this x here in the first equation, this x here in the first equation is the same as the x in the second equation, right? Uh, the y in the uh, the first the parametric equation is the same as the y in the second, and etc. The z in the first equation here is the same as the z in the third and the second parametric equation. So same x. It means that. So same x. Same y and same z. So then. Uh, so we're gonna have three equations. Um, so my first x, the 1 plus 2t is equal to negative 1 plus s. So 1 plus 2t, 1 plus 2t, that's my first x, is equal to the second x, which is negative 1 plus s. So it's equal to negative 1 plus s. Um, <clears throat> the same y, so uh, the 3t is the same as, is equal to 4 plus s. So 3t is equal to 4 plus s, and finally, same z. So then uh, 2 minus t is equal to 1 plus 3s. 2 minus t is equal to 1 minus 3s. Right? 2 minus t is 1 plus 3s. 1 plus 3s, sorry. Right? So we have three equations here. Uh, let's call, first. so this is a, my first equation. Here's my second. Here's my third. Okay, so uh, let's say you start with one here, first equation, okay? And let's say you uh, solve for, for example, in the first equation, you can solve uh, for, uh, let's say for S. So let's solve for S here in the first equation. So let's solve for S in one. Okay, so we have, you know, you have 1 plus 2t is negative 1 plus s. So if you add plus 1 to the both equations, so then it's, uh, let's do plus 1 both equations. So here's plus 1 here, plus 1 here, right? So then, so it's going to be 2 plus 2t is equal to s, right? So, so s is equal to 2 plus 2t, two okay? So, s is equal to 2 plus 2t. Two now, let's move to the second equation. So, let's say equation number 2. So, now let's solve for t. Okay, I'm going to solve for t. So, so equation number two says that 3t is 4 plus s. So we know that 3t is 4 plus s, right? But, so we know from uh, uh, first equation that s is 2 plus 2t, right? So this s here, so this s here is equal to 2 plus 2t, right? So then, uh, you know, 3t is equal to 4 plus, so s, so it's 4 plus 2 plus 2t, two so that would be equal to, so then 3t, 3t is equal to 6 plus 2t, okay, you can subtract here, let's say, subtract 2t, subtract 2t, 
then 1t is equal to 6. So t is equal to 6. t is equal to 6. But we know that s is actually 2 plus 2t, two right? So s would be 2 plus uh, 2 plus so 2 plus 2 times 6, so that's 14. So you see, guys, we used the first and the second equation, right? We used the first and the second equation uh, to solve for S and T. So uh, T is 6 and S is uh, 14. So S is 14. Now, what about the third equation? Well. So our, so our solution uh, for the first and the second is uh, s is uh, t is 6 and s is 14. So now let's check, we need to check the third equation. So if the third equation is satisfied, so now check 3. So the third equation is 2 minus t is 1 plus 3s, right? So, so we know the third equation 1 minus t is equal to, uh, sorry, 2 minus t is 1 plus 3s. 2 minus t is 1 plus 3s. 2 minus t is 1 plus 3s, right? Plus 3s. But, uh, you know, we know that t is 6 and s is 14, right? Uh, from the first and the second equation, right? t is 6 and uh, s is uh, uh, 14. So let's just replace here. So that's then 2 minus 6 equal to 1 plus 3 times 14. So that's negative 4 here. Uh, this is uh, 3 times 14 is 42 plus 1 is 43, right? That's impossible, right? Negative 4, of course, is not equal to 43. That's impossible. Okay. So if it's impossible, it means that there is no such point of uh, intersection. So there is no intersection point. There is no intersection point. Okay, so then uh, there's no intersection point, it means that the two lines are skewed. So L1 and L2 are skewed. Okay. Of course, if the third equation here is satisfied, is for example, for some reason you find negative 4 is equal to negative 4, which is of course uh, true, right? So then there is an intersection point, so it means that the, the two lines do intersect, and uh, uh, the point of intersection would be the point of, uh, when uh, t is, uh, is 6 or when s is 14. That would be the, poor, the, the, the intersection point, okay? Now, uh, guys, so now let's move to the, the planes. Well, for lines, we said uh, to determine a line, we need a point. Uh, uh, to determine a line, we need a point and a direction vector. Here, uh, for planes, to determine a plane, determine equation of a plane. Uh, we're going to need the equation of uh, a plane. Uh, we're going to need a point again, OK? Uh, we need a point first. And we're gonna need a vector, which is not uh, like, uh, which is uh, which is not uh, perpendicular, but uh, which is not sorry, which is not uh, parallel, but actually perpendicular uh, to the to the plane. A vector perpendicular to the plane. perpendicular uh, to the plane. Okay. 
So let's call the point here, the point P equal to x0, y0, z0. And the vector uh, u, let's call the vector u, uh, vector perpendicular to the plane, uh, vector u perpendicular to the plane. So let's, uh, let's say that u is given by ABC. Okay. So all I'm saying, guys, so if you have a point here, okay, and you have uh, a vector u, okay, let's say this is a vector u, then the plane which is which passes through the the point p and perpendicular to the uh, to, uh, to the vector u would be this one here you see so here it's the vector u is actually perpendicular to the plane p so this is the vector u and here's your plane p Well, so how to, so let's determine the equation of the plane. So let's determine the equation of the plane. equation of uh, uh, the plane okay so uh, so we said the plane passes through the point so the plane uh, passes through The point P, uh, let's say the point P is x0, y0, z0, and perpendicular to the vector so u here, let's say it's ABC. Actually, this vector u is called a normal vector to the plane. Normal vector uh, to the plane. Okay. Well, so so here's my plane. Uh, here's my point P. Okay, and here's my vector u. So my vector u is perpendicular to the plane. So here's my vector u. Now, how do we find the equation of the plane? Well, uh, so uh, you take a random point which lies on the plane. So for example, you take this point here. Okay, so let's call this point, this is the point x, y, z, right? Now the thing is, because uh, you know the vector u is perpendicular to the plane, then actually the vector u is going to be perpendicular to the to the to the vector. This vector here, uh, this one here, so from from p to this point x. Okay, so here we have a, a right angle. Okay. So, so let's call this point here capital X, okay? So you see the thing is the vector PX, so here this is the vector uh, PX. So the PX is actually uh, perpendicular to the vector U. In other words, so what's the vector px? Uh, again, vector px goes from p to x, right? So initial point is p, uh, terminal point is x, so it's, it's, it's actually x minus x0. Uh, p, remember p, it's x0, y0, z0, right? That's my p. And my capital x is x, y, z. 
So x minus x0, y minus y0, z minus z0 is actually perpendicular to the vector abc, so a, b, c. Okay, so then uh, it means that um, the dot product of the two vectors is zero. Okay, so then uh, if you do a dot product of px with u, that's going to be equal to zero, right? Because remember, uh, guys, two vectors are, are perpendicular if and only if their dot product is uh, zero. Okay, so then the dot product is going to be zero. So let's do the dot product of the vector word, px and uh, with that with the dot product of px with u. So that will be equal to. So then, so we multiply the coordinates, right? So then a times x minus x zero plus b times y minus y zero plus c times z minus z zero is equal to zero. Okay. Uh, so in other words, ax minus ax0 plus by minus by0 plus cz minus c0 is equal to 0. And then so we get, so then ax, in other words, ax plus by plus cz is equal to ax0 plus uh, by0 plus cz0, okay? So, in other words, uh, AX plus BY plus CZ is equal to some D, where D is AX0 plus BY0 plus CZ0, okay? So, this is actually the equation of our plane, this one here. So this is, is the equation of the of our plane. Uh, so of the plane passing through uh, p equal to uh, x zero y zero z zero and perpendicular to vector u equal to the vector, let's say the u is a, b, c. Okay. So let's do an example here. So examples. So example one. So let's say we want to find the equation of the plane Uh, passing through uh, the point. So let's say P is uh, the point 1, 0, negative 2. And so the plane is perpendicular. Uh, to the vector to u equal to uh, 1 or let's say instead of 1 let's say uh, 3 negative 1 and then uh, uh, 4 okay. so what will be the uh, the uh, the answer here so the equation is the following so answer so the equation of the plane is, so remember guys, supposed to be ax plus by plus cz equal to d, where d is, you know, a, so d is uh, ax0 
plus by0 plus cz0, right? So what's abc in this problem? Well, abc, that's the coordinates of the vector perpendicular to the normal vector, right? The vector which is perpendicular to the plane. So the normal vector here is the is vector u. So this is our normal vector. So a in this problem would be as a is 3, b is negative 1, and c is 4, right? Now, what about the x0, y0, z0? That's the point. So the, the plane passes through the point p, 1, 0, negative 2. So here, this is uh, x0, the 0 is y0, and negative 2 is z, z0, okay? So then the answer would be, so a is t times x plus negative 1 times y plus c, which is 4 times z, equal to a x0, so a is t times x0 is 1 plus b, which is negative 1, times y0, which is 0, plus c, which is 4, times z0, which is negative 2, right? So then that's 3x minus y plus uh, 4z equal to what? So 3 uh, plus 0, 3 plus 0 minus 8. So the, the final answer of the equation of a plane would be 3x minus y plus 4, 0 equal to a negative 5. So that would be the final answer. That's the equation of our plane. 3x minus y plus 4, 0 equal to negative 5. Okay. So now um, another question, guys, here. Uh, so you know that this, the, you know, the plane here passes through the point P. 1, uh, 0, negative 2. It's because if you replace x by 1, uh, so the answer again, let me write it down here. So the plane is so we said the plane is tx minus y plus z plus 4z, sorry. Plus 4z equal to negative 5, right? So equal to negative 5. So you see the point P here, if you replace, so P, which is 1, 0, negative 2, it belongs to the plane, right? It belongs to the plane. Well, because, well, you see, if you replace x, Uh, because if you do three times, so x here is one, so three times one plus minus y, so minus zero plus four z, z is negative two, plus four times negative two, so that will be equal to what? Well, it's gonna be equal to negative five, okay? So it's negative five. So that's why this point P here belongs to the plane. Uh, if you take, uh, let's say Q, so here's a question here. Does uh, the point Q equal to, say, 1, 2, 4? Does this point belong to the plane? Well, so... So uh, the question is, again, it's, we have the x, right, minus y plus 4z equal, supposed to be equal to negative 5. So if you replace now uh, x here by 1, y by 2, and z by 4. So let's see what happens. So it's 3 times 1 minus 2 plus 4 times uh, 4, right? So that's equal to... Um, well, 3 minus 2 is a negative uh, 1 plus uh, four, uh, 16, that's a fifth, positive 15, right? So it's 15, which is not negative 5. We're supposed to have, you know, here we have in the equation, we have negative 5, but we get 15, right? Which is not negative 5. So this point Q doesn't belong to the plane. So the, the Q does not belong to the plane because it doesn't satisfy the equation. The coordinates of the point Q doesn't satisfy the equation of the plane. It doesn't belong to the plane. Uh, 
Another question. So question, find another point of the plane. So we have the point P, right? Find another point. which belongs to the plane. Uh, 3x minus y, 3x minus y plus 4z equal to 5, right? Well, we know we have this point P, right? We have this. We know that this point B here belongs to the. This point P here belongs to the plane, right? Uh, but let's say let's try to find another point. Well, all you have to do, guys, just replace, you know, x by some number. Let's say x. X is one, and uh, y is two. Okay. So then, what will be z in this case? You know, we have the times x, so 3 times 1, minus y, so minus 2, plus, so z must be equal to, so plus 4z equals to 5, so this is, uh, uh, so 3 minus 2, that's negative 1, plus 4z equal to 5, so then 4z is equal to 6, so then z is 6 over, six over 4, right? So what I'm saying here is that the point R, say capital R, R, X is 1, Y is 2, and Z equal to 6 over 4 belongs to the plane. So you see, guys, if you have the equation of a plane, so here you have this equation of a plane, all we have to do is to fix two of the coordinates. So let's say you fix X and Y, okay, and then you have to find the z which satisfies the equation or of course you can uh, you can fix y and z okay fix some value of y and z and then you find you need to find the the x which satisfies the equation okay so all you have to do is to fix two uh, values of the coordinates let's say x and y and then you have to find the third uh, coordinate using the equation okay. uh, let's do another, another example uh, example two So let's find uh, the equation of the of the plane. Passing through the point. Let's say P is, I don't know, let's say a one, zero, two, and contains contains the line L. So let's say L is x minus t, y is 2 plus 2t, and z is uh, 3 minus uh, or plus t. Okay, 3 plus t. So again, guys, we have, here's a point, here's a line, and then, so then uh, you, uh, you need to find the plane, which is which contains the, the line and which passes through the through the point P. Okay, so here's so this is here, this is the point P. So how do you find the equation of the plane? Well, remember guys, to determine the equation of the plane, we need a point. So here we have a point, you have the point P, which is good, so that's a good news. But then you need to determine we need a, a vector which is perpendicular to the plane. So we need a normal vector, right? So we need a vector which is, uh, we need a vector u. So we need a vector u, which is, you know, perpendicular to the plane. So we don't have the vector u here, right? We don't know what's the, what will be the vector which is perpendicular to the, the plane. But we know that there is a line uh, that, the, we know the equation of a line which is in the, which lies in the, in the, in the plane, right? So how do you find this vector u? So, so here what I'm saying is we have a point. Okay. So we need to find a normal vector. We need to find 
a vector perpendicular to the plane. Okay, so what's the idea here? The idea is the following. So what we can do is uh, uh, the following. Uh, you can take, you know, we have this line here. So you can take two points of this line here. Let's say this is a Q here. This is a point R, okay? So then you have these two vectors. You have this vector, let's say PQ, right? You have this vector of PQ and you have this vector PR. Right? So the two vectors, of course, the two vectors, they belong to the, to the, to the plane, right? The two vectors are the, belong to the plane, but if you take the cross product of PQ with PR, you get a vector which is perpendicular to both, and it's going to be a vector which is perpendicular actually to the plane. So, uh, so let's say, uh, say, for example, T is zero, okay? So if you say t is zero, then uh, you get the point Q. Let's say Q is one, two, three, right? So that will be a point of the uh, which belongs to the line, and of course, uh, uh, so uh, it lies on the belongs to the plane, right? So this is the point uh, Q. Now let's say t, you can take any value of t actually, it doesn't really matter. So let's say t is one. So then you get the point r, for example, so r would be one minus one is zero. So then two plus two is four, and then uh, three uh, plus one is four. So we get this point r, okay? So now we have these two points uh, are q that both belong to the line, right? So now we can take the vector pq and pr. So both vectors, uh, they belong to the plane. So what's PQ here? So PQ is going to be equal to, so uh, coordinates of Q. So Q is one, two, three. So one, two, three. And uh, P, P is one, zero, two. So P is one, zero, two. So then PQ is the vector. So zero, two, one. Okay, now what about PR? So PR, so what are the coordinates of R? R is 0, 4, 4. So it's 0, 4, 4. What are the coordinates of P? So it's 1, 0, 2. So then PR is the vector negative 1, 4, 2, right? So we have these two vectors here, PQ and PR. So now, so what I'm saying is that if you take cross product so the cross product of uh, pq with pr is going to be actually so cross product pq with uh, pr is going to be is remember guys a cross product is always perpendicular to both vectors right so the cross product of pq with pr is going to be perpendicular to both of them and it's going to be perpendicular to the plane it is perpendicular to the plane to both of them and so it's going to be perpendicular to the plane So that would be a normal vector. Okay, so now what's a PQ cross product with PR? So PQ cross product with PR. So we know how to do the cross product. So again, this is I, J, here's K. PQ is 0, 2, 1. PR is negative 1, 4, 2. So the cross product is going to be, so it's going to be a, two, a 4, 4 minus 4, so it's 0. Uh, for j, you have negative, uh, so here, a negative, and then, uh, so it's uh, 0 minus negative 1, so it's plus 1, but you have a negative, so it's negative 1. Okay, and for k, we have 0 times 4, so that's 0, 
minus uh, negative 2, so that's plus 2. Okay, so a normal vector, uh, the, a normal vector u, so a normal vector to the plane, again, normal means perpendicular to the plane, vector, uh, normal vector to the plane is uh, given by, so let's say vector u, we said it's 0, negative 1, 2, so it's 0, negative 1, and then 2, okay? So the equation of the line, of the, the plane now, so find the answer, so then the equation of uh, the plane, so remember it's ax0, remember it's ax0 plus by plus cz equal to ax0 plus by0 plus cz0, right? So what's a, b, c here? So that's the normal vector. So here, this is my a, this is my b, my, my c. And uh, for uh, the x0, y0, q, uh, z0, you can pay, take any point, actually. It doesn't really matter, p, q, or r. All of them are, you can pick any of that point. So let's say this is x0, y0, z0 here. So it's gonna be, so a, we said this is 0 times x, so 0 times x plus b, which is negative 1 times y, plus c, which is 2 times z. So 2 times z equal to a times, so a again is 0, x0. So we said uh, x0 is 1 times 1 plus b, which is negative 1 times y0. y0 is 0 plus c, which is 2 times z0. z0, we said point p, so it's uh, 2. So here is 2. So then we have negative y plus 2z equal to 0, 0 plus uh, 2, so that's plus 4. So the equation, of course, 0 times x is just 0, so it's going to be just 0 there. So the equation of the, of the plane is actually um, negative y plus uh, 2z equal to 4, okay? So that's the equation of the, of the plane. Okay, guys, let's just finish the uh, last thing here, distance between, uh, uh, the distance between, uh, between the point, uh, P, And so point P and uh, plane, plane A, X, let's say plus B, Y, plus C, Z. Let's say here, be careful here. So plus, let's say plus D equal to zero. Okay, so here is my point. Here is my uh, plane. So the distance would between the point and the plane would be, so you take the point here and, you know, you take the line which is uh, perpendicular to the plane and which passes through the point. So the distance So this would be the distance between the point and the plane. So this is our distance. Okay, so you just take the, you know, you take the line which is uh, which is perpendicular to the plane and which passes through the the point okay and so then you get this uh, the, the distance would be this so between this point here and the intersection uh, the intersection point of the line with the with the the, 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 the line with the, with the plane okay so that would be the distance so we have a formula for the distance so actually it's given the formula is the following so the distance between the plane and uh, between the plane and the point is given by uh, distance is always positive or zero. So you need to take the absolute value. So it's supposed to be AX0 plus BY0 plus CZ0 plus D 
over square root of a square plus b square plus c square okay so you can find the proof of this uh, formula in the in lecture notes now let's do an, just an example numerical example so you can see how it works so example let's say you want to find the distance Uh, between say the point P uh, let's say point one zero negative two or uh, one zero negative two let's say here so negative two and the plane X minus two Z equal to three okay so uh, you need to apply the formula. Remember, the formula was distance is equal absolute value. So we have a x zero. So what's a here? Uh, so you remember, guys, in the equation of a plane, it's supposed to be a x plus b y plus c z uh, plus d here equal to zero, right? So this is one x. So a is one, right? So a is one times x zero. So here's x zero, x zero is one plus b. So what's b here? b y, right? But here there is no there is no y in the equation of this plane. So b is means that it means that b is zero. So the zero times y is zero. Y zero is zero plus c. What's C here? So C is Z. So C is the coefficient of Z. So here it's a negative 2 Z, right? So it's uh, C is negative 2 times Z0. Well, Z0 is also negative 2. Here's Z0. So it's now another negative 2 plus D. So here, be careful, guys. The equation is X minus 2 Z equal to 3, right? So if you move, you see here in the, in the equation here, plus D, the, the, the D is in the, in the left side. So if you move the 3 to the left side here, to the left side here, so it's going to be negative 3. So just be careful here. So it's going to be negative 3 if you move to the left side. So then plus, it's not plus 3, but it's plus negative 3 because you have to move it to the left side, right? Your D here is in the left side of the equation. So uh, plus, so minus 3 over, so square root of A square. Uh, A, we said it's 1, so 1 square plus B square. B is 0, we said, and Z is uh, C square. C is negative 2, so that's negative 2 square. So then the distance... We're going to be equal to absolute value of so the top here we have one uh, plus four that's five five minus three that's uh, two so two over square root of uh, one plus four so that's five so two over square root of five so the final answer would be two over square root of five so that's the distance between p and the plane So it's two over square root of five. Okay, guys, I'm gonna stop here. It was a kind of a long lecture, but uh, anyway, I will see you next time.